Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, I'm joined with my guest, John Leonard, who is the owner of Joy Photo and Video. Excited to be jumping in, having some conversation around business, around this crazy journey of entrepreneurship and all the stuff that comes along with it. So first and foremost, John, thank you so much for taking the time to, to be here. Um, why don't we just start with a little bit of background? You know, give us the call it 10,000 foot view, you know, give us kind of a little bit of your background and tell us a little bit about your business. Yeah, cool. Great. Thanks for having me. And I'm excited to share the experiences I've had so that listeners can benefit from that and have value from that. So, um, I've been running joy photo and video for well, we started 2019 right before COVID and joy photo and video is a wedding photography and videography company. So we provide wedding photo and video to couples throughout the entire U.S., <clears throat> most of the major cities, which is somewhere around 35, 36, something like that. It fluctuates because we're constantly changing. So um, that is what we do. And it didn't start out that big. Um, we started out in 2019 much smaller. So um yeah and then my background i've been married for 14 years this summer <laughs> i always have to start at 2010 and okay now where are we <laughs> and uh, i have six kids and um i i finished school actually which is funny in chemistry and i got a master's as well in science engineering and that's what originally brought us out to the houston area so I kind of went through that cycle and that journey of figuring out what I want to be when I grow up and spent about eight years just trying different jobs in that industry. And, and the more I went through that process, the more I understood about myself that I really wanted to work for myself, to have to, to be in charge of a company to and, and have the benefits of that, which is the time freedom. Well, more time freedom, I should say. Um a little more financial freedom. And those are all great things, but it's not overnight. And it's not what you see online from all the different, you know, Amazon fulfillment and affiliate marketing and all the things that you get shot at, you know, when you're on social. So, um, but yeah, that's been really great. It's just been a great blessing to be able to spend more time with my kids and my wife and still be able to work hard. And, and uh, so, yeah, I can get more about into that. I'm sure later, but yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, so what, especially knowing, you know, what your you know, educational, you know, trades are in and all that kind of stuff, like what, what led to this business? What, what led to photo and video, especially for, you know, weddings and things like that? Um, how'd you stumble across this industry specifically? Yeah, that's a good question too. <laughs> um, I've always kind of been naturally drawn and gifted in the arts in general um drawing painting music I had a band in college i was also an audio engineer i did live audio uh, recording for live shows not recording sorry uh, just audio engineering for live shows so that was always something that i enjoyed but when i got to college i didn't think that i could really make any money doing those things and most people in college don't even know what they're doing there anyways i didn't know what i was doing so <laughs> I just thought that I wanted to be a doctor. Honestly, I thought about things that I thought would be great. And that was, there's a lot of great things about that field. And so that's why I majored in chemistry, but I got married and then we had our first child. And from there, I just kept working because that's what, that was the right thing to do, you know, to be responsible and take care of the family. So it, it kind of just led into that field. And eventually my brother-in-law, who's also super entrepreneurial, found this licensing agreement where, um, you could pay the the company to give you a license, which included like media and a website and uh, marketing. And then you could run a photo and video business. And so that's what I, what I originally got started into on the side. And then in doing that, I learned different things. And then eventually I didn't need their, their part of the license anymore. So I exited the agreement and continued running the business. So I got into it and I was gen genuinely interested anyways, because that's kind of my natural gifts, but it's kind of just 
I don't know, some, in some ways, I kind of think I just picked something and went after it, <laughs> but I, I think it all was, you know, part of, uh, I wouldn't say destiny because I don't believe in that fully, but it was just kind of meant to be too. So, yeah, that's awesome. So if I'm understanding kind of the, the trajectory started with, uh, kind of almost doing it on the side, licensing through, uh, kind of a, another agreement, that sort of thing, then exiting there and just really kind of building up the, the business, um, since 2019 or so, uh, from yeah. there. Yeah. Um, awesome. I love it. So when, when you made this transition, uh, was it hundred percent solo? Did you have business partners that, that came along with you? Um, you know, what, what was that like? You know, was it a two feet all in, like you're going for it and, and taking that leap or, uh, yeah. what, what, what did that, you know, transition look like for you? So the licensing agreement was, was very close to what you might feel like, like a franchise, but it wasn't. And so in doing that, I, we had a group of all of the other owners who were licensees. So in joining, we had that support together to kind of, Hey, what's going on in your area of the country? You know, this, this, and that I had a license agreement for Houston and Los Angeles County, because it was divided up and then Las Vegas and Reno actually too. So I kind of grew into that, but it was nice to have that support because that's where we could kind of bounce ideas and, and kind of do other things because we didn't have to just, it wasn't like a franchise. We didn't have to do everything that the main company said we had to do. We could just, the way I liken it or, or give an example is um, you own a t-shirt company and you want to put Mickey Mouse on your t-shirt. Well, you can go pay Disney for the licensing to have the Mickey Mouse head symbol and put it on your t-shirt. But outside of that, you might do all sorts of different things. So that was the same for us. We had a licensing where we did a certain you know portion of what we were paying them royalties for that we had as assets for the business, but we could do other things. So that was a great support. And um, in starting that on the side, yes, it kind of just continued to grow. COVID was really tough because... For the wedding industry, everything was on hold. Um, venues, there were a lot of restric restrictions because those are big events with people close together. So it didn't stop book the booking, which you have the two sides, the booking and then the fulfillment. So, or the sales and the fulfillment. So you, the booking, the sales were still coming because people were going to plan their weddings, assuming this was going to blow over. And then the actual weddings we had on the books, those were held. They, 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 they couldn't hold them and the, the venues and other vendors were pausing that. So they were all held and pushed back. So it wasn't, it was just a cash flow management issue, which wasn't a great time because I just started into it and <laughs> we were all trying to figure that out. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that answers, I, I think, feel like I'm rambling, but I think that answers what you asked. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So I, I'll, I want to, you know, kind of click into that for, for a moment before we move on. So uh, the, the whole COVID situation, I, and I imagine based on what you just shared and, and being in, you know, multiple different city, cities and different states, even um, kind of navigating through that was, was there, was it extra challenging having multiple states and kind of different restrictions and things like that, that, um, yeah. you know, each state went through when it comes to venues and things like that. Like what, how did you navigate through that? What I'm sure was compounding this, the stressfulness of, of just COVID overall. Well, in that case, it was kind of like the path of least resistance. We just kind of flowed with where the business was and California was shut down. Texas was open. So made it simple. We just went after Texas more and advertised more there and grew there. So awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when you look at your, obviously, you know, from 2019 to today, uh, business continues to grow. You've, you've, you've done a lot of things there. Um, how is, you know, what is, what is your role in the business today? Like if you kind of looked at the different departments or the, you know, the different hats that you wear in the business, what does that look like today? And how has that shifted from, you know, back when you started this thing in 2019? So my role right now is, a lot of training and helping the the team that we've built so far and also a lot of the like i would say it like software automation marketing stuff so when i when i was on my way out of chemicals uh working as a chemist i should say that in in that industry i was i had transitioned into sales which i really wanted and enjoyed and like many people have said you might have 
listeners or you might have heard this is that's probably one of the most important skills to start off with. That's like the main skill is sales. And so learning how to talk to people, learning how to communicate and learning how to serve them. That's really what I teach my sales team is it's communication and service. And that's what sales, that's really what it boils down to. So when I transitioned into running the business, I kind of stuck in with what I was good at and what I enjoyed and energized me. And that was sales and marketing and um, automations and marketing automations and things like that. So that's still what I, what I hold to my goal in building the business would eventually have me removed because if I wanted to sell that to someone else, I don't Mm -hmm. want that to be contingent that they have to, you know, be that owner operator and fill those roles. So everyone's different, but that's pretty much what I do. So I kind of train and coach the sales team. We have other people on the team that I'll guide and, and consult as needed. Um, and right now I'm in a stage where I'm like, I'm building out a lot of standard operating procedures so that, that things can just be more organized. And, uh, I have a lot of it stuff. Like today we have something going on in the app that we built and I work with our developer a lot on that. So yeah, just fixing sometimes just kind of fixing stuff every day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. I, I, I love the kind of the growth there. I love the, the, uh, the examples and, and kind of where you're, where you're looking to take it. Uh, yeah. when you look at kind of, you know, this journey through, through building the business, uh, and being in the, you know, from sales and marketing to now I'm kind of running the business and we're growing, we've got team, we've got all this other stuff running now. Um, what are some of the, like, major lessons that stand out in your head on, you know, having to learn this process of like learning how to build and run a business. Uh, Maybe it's a a roadblock that you had to overcome at some point. Maybe it's just a a big lesson. You're like, man, this was one that, you know, really stands out in my mind. Um, But, you know, what, what stands out to you? Cause I'm sure there's a bunch, but you know, what stands out to you the most to when it comes to, you know, lessons that you've had to kind of grow through as a business owner? Yeah. So first of all, I personally think that anybody's capable of running a business or having some type of leadership role like that, whether you're in mid-management in a corporation or whatever it is, um, managing people and stuff and processes, everybody's capable of that. But I think that the difference is that you have to really have a motivation and a fire. And that's what motivated me to get out of working for another company and working for myself. And that first initial desire is kind of almost, if you've experienced it, almost like psychotic. (laughs) Like It's something that when you think of like Kobe Bryant, like this guy's crazy. I mean, I don't think I'm like Kobe Bryant. He he was pretty intense, but um, you, you just get so focused and fanatic about that goal that it becomes easy for you. It's not like hard. So number one, if you don't have that fire is what I'm getting at. When you get to the hard stuff, you won't last because you don't, you don't want it. You don't want it enough. And the hard things are going to come because you don't know everything and you, you are going to make mistakes. And the goal is to make the most mistakes as fast as you can and not destroy your business. <laughs> so you can figure it out and learn and grow and make keep your business. So that's uh that's what I've done. And some of the biggest things that I've run into, I would say one of the the, the hardest decisions what first was um leaving my full-time job because at that time I had five kids and I'm the 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 breadwinner. So I, I provide the income. My wife is full-time kids and mommy and wife. So I'm total, totally different, you know, job. And that's, we have our roles split just like a business. We have our roles split. So, um, that was really scary. And that's, that's, that was a challenge, but again, because I, I wanted that so badly, it, it wasn't easy or it was easy for me to jump. It was easy for me to make the leap in a sense. Cause even though it was scary, I wanted it. The second thing that came about from that was um, cash flow management. Since this is a project-based business and the projects last over a year, you really have to understand how to manage the cash. And honestly, it just just hold on to it. Don't spend it. But that became an issue because it's it was too easy to grow. And I think some people make, I think a lot of people make that mistake as entrepreneurs. 
they grow too fast and then the whole thing collapses. And like I said, you want to make those problems, you want to find those problems and find, you know, your poor decision making process early on when things are small and manageable until not when they're huge and big and you have a big company, because then you can fix it easier and the whole company won't collapse. So um, I grew too fast as well. I had that same problem because it was, it's just too easy to advertise and book weddings and pull that cash in and not have any expenses or fulfillment costs because the wedding's next year. So um, I made that mistake of feeling, because, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're so excited to make it. Like you want to get there where you're like, I'm making a lot of money and I'm, and I'm free and this is great and the company's doing great and everyone's happy or customers are happy. And, but you have to go through that lesson too. Um, and I did. And so that was another really hard thing. I reached a point where I watched other companies around me that were kind of my cohorts in that licensing agreement start to fall apart. And I hit that same challenge where basically I was like, I was out of money, out of cat, like the cash was gone. And I had hundreds of brides, hundreds of couples that we had to fulfill and contractors that I had to pay. It was hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I scaled it all back. I stopped advertising in places. I stuck it back to Texas. I had to fire everybody. Um, and those are the tough decisions. And I literally, I had, di like, I could have been diagnosed easily with severe anxiety for six months. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, like I had the tingling in my tongue. I was just, it, so those things happen. Like I said, you're going to make mistakes and because you don't know it all and you can consult with people and be and kind of go slow. But really the entrepreneur's journey is like going after it. Just do it now and you're going to mess up and just figure it out and don't do it when your business is so big so that you can still manage it. And so that was a time where that was like my second big, am I going to stick through with this? Am I going to do it? Because I could have just walked away and said, screw it, forget everybody. Um, but I just couldn't do it. I, I just didn't, I have, I wanted to keep the integrity for me personally. No one else knows that, you know, and I'm sharing it now, but um, no one else knew that I was sitting there thinking I can either do good on these couples and on my, on my contractors, or I can just abandon it and give up. And I can always go back to sales and make, make money and not have all these problems. So, like I said, it's not get rich quick, you no know, fly by night, overnight success kind of thing. That's kind of what the world tells you, but it's a long-term play and you got to stick with it. You have, you can't give up that that's really the one. I think another big thing of a successful entrepreneur is when you hit that hard time is you just can't give up. You have to keep going. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, there, there's so many things in there that, um, I, if we had the time, I'd love to just like really dive into, you know, the, the yeah. first, you know, on, on one of the last things you said, you know, the, it's not a get rich quick type thing. And I, I had a mentor once tell me that, you know, he, he can teach you how to get rich quick. If your definition of quick is 10 years, it's like, oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a fun way to look at it. Um, but no, I mean, you the, the cash flow management, the, you know, all of that piece, if, 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 if you're an entrepreneur out there that has been through anything like that and like, Oh crap, we're out of cash, but we got to, you know, still run the business and you have to let people go like that sucks. Um, but it, it's a huge learning lesson. So, you know, I'm curious as you've kind of learned through, through that type of a, of a scenario, how do you mitigate that today? Um, do you put in different, you know, forecasting type things when it comes to understanding how, how to manage cash flow? What are some of the kind of tidbits of of maybe process or, or things that you look at today that can avoid those types of things in the future? Yeah. Well, first, the nice thing was is that when I had that moment in that business and I knew I needed to solve those problems, I could look to other businesses and realize, okay, they're doing it. They've been around for decades. There's a solution for this. I can do this. It kind of gave me that sense of hope. Like, it's not like I've started this novel thing and I have no idea what I'm doing. Like other people are doing this. There's a way I can figure this out. And so, you know, starting there, one major thing was since I had people doing people tasks, 
when I fired those people, I was left with the burden of all this work. It was not possible to do all the work. So I naturally turned honestly to my wife. My wife's always like, I bounce things off her and, and she just comes back and she comes with like the purest, simplest wisdom. And she's like, why don't you do that? And then she kind of goes back to, you know, and then I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we, she had some ideas, like she had used an app to kind of schedule something for the kids. She was like, why don't you just create an app like that? Because this little like school app, this dinky cheap app they made is working and we all schedule stuff. So what happened was I realized, okay, here's the hierarchy of how we want to have uh, fulfillment services done in the business. If I can do it with software first, I'm going to do it with software. So my first thought to anything that I do is like, can software do this? And that was a big lesson for me. So I got resourceful with what I had you know, in front of me. The second is, can I do this with a foreign virtual assistant? The people that you can hire overseas are smart. They're, they're hardworking. They're, they're grateful. They're humble. They're, there's always a spread of, you know, different types of people in the world. But what I found is when I look for those people, they, they have all those attributes. And from a business perspective, they, I can pay them less. That's just the fact. I can pay them much less. And I don't have to deal with some of the cultural issues that you might find with hiring Americans, like entitlement and laziness and ghosting. I had two contractors ghost me the last month who were supposed to be my social media managers. So these people are wonderful and I love having them on my team. And I hire from Argentina um, and Eastern Europe. And they're they're honest, they're good. So then I go there, that's my next level. And then after that, if I, I have to absolutely have an American, then I'm going to pay a lot more money, <laughs> which I hate saying, but we can't all do everything in America. Like we can't, we can't grow bananas here, maybe in Hawaii or Florida or something, but we have to import bananas, right? We can't do everything. So, um, so then I go there and really that's for customer facing. Cause I kind of have a pet peeve. I hate calling like banks and other customer service. And I'm talking to someone international and I just don't feel a connection, you know? So especially in weddings, I need to have an American girl who's going to connect with another girl who's excited about the wedding. So that's a must have. So that's kind of my hierarchy. And that allowed me to really squeeze down on my expenses. Software never sleeps, doesn't have vacation days, doesn't get sick doesn't have family problems. It's always running. It's, it was one of the greatest things I've ever done for the business. Honestly, it saved the business is developing the software. But so with that, I'll take that and uh, kind of shrink down the expenses. And I, then I, yes, I do project. It's hard to project though, because if I project out too far, that's going to be different in a month because we're going to book more weddings in that month. So I really can't predict it. It can change. So I, I do about a couple months out and I understand how much it costs to fulfill and I understand my fixed costs of marketing and software costs and things like that. So that's kind of how I group that all together. And honestly, I'm it's still of a challenge for me. I haven't really wrapped my hands around it and had a complete um, 100% confidence in that whole process, but it's good enough. <laughs> so, Yeah. Well, you're, I mean, you're already forecasting, doing some things that, um, not every business owner does. So yeah, I, I totally commend you on, on the things that you've been working on and, and you've clearly had a lot of success. So that's, that's amazing. Um, well, I do want to be you know respectful of the time that we have here. I've got a few rapid fire questions. I'd love to kind of, okay. um, just pull out some, you know, wisdom nuggets for the audience, that sort of thing. So when you look at your journey overall from pre-starting this business to starting the business and growing it, uh, what would you say for you is kind of your call it key to success do it now and never give up i like that um how about advice if you could give just one piece of advice you can only give one if you give one piece of advice to other entrepreneurs out there what would you want to give them a piece of advice to give entrepreneurs out there what where are they in their stage of entrepreneurship <laughs> All anywhere. sorts. That, that That's what makes it fun is you get to give advice for where um, you can preface it any way you want to, but uh, any stay, just like general piece. 
Yeah, I would say stay humble. Just know that um, if you're one decision away from losing it all, just stay humble. And uh, yeah, yeah. I like it. Uh, how about book recommendations? Uh, anything that you're reading now, have read recently, or I will even phrase it because I know not everyone's a huge reader, but uh, podcasts you listen to, video series, like anything that's like kind of learning consumption, personal growth oriented, that sort of thing. Anything yeah. you'd recommend to the audience? Well, definitely read every day and read good books. Um, one book that I'm reading lately is The One Thing. Hmm. I think that a lot of problems that as an entrepreneur you come across is the more, let me back up. I also listen and read a lot of Alex Hormozzi. I think he's great. Yeah. Awesome. And just get connected in all the different types of people like him. There's so many different great people that add value. But one of the things he said that I agree with is the more that you grow and succeed as an entrepreneur, you're going to have these shiny objects and the shiny object syndrome, but the girl in the red dress gets like more beautiful and more attractive. So you have to just stay focused on one thing. And that's kind of my lately is I'm just like, let's stay focused. And because it's entrepreneur, it's so easy. Like oh, I can do that. That's, that'd be easy. I can just pop over there and boom, boom. And, but I think that once you start to make money and you're successful, you realize it's not about that dream of like, I'm going to have my laptop on the beach. It actually does become like, I want to serve a lot of customers. I want to see people happy. I want my employees and my contractors to really enjoy this work and to have to have a good day, to have a good life. And your your mindset changes. But yeah, lately, Alex Ramosi is great. The One Thing is a good book. So yeah. Awesome. Both phenomenal recommendations. Yeah. Um, all right, one more rapid fire question. We'll kind of get up to our, our, our final wrap ups here, but uh, this one's just kind of fun. Uh, if you could take a little bit of magic dust, you could sprinkle it all over just one area in your business and you can only choose one. That's the key here. Choose one area in the business, take a little bit of magic dust, sprinkle it all over it and you wake up tomorrow. It's you know 10 times better than it is today. Where would you choose to put the, uh, put the magic dust? If my contractors ever hear this, I hope they still love me, but my contractors... <laughs> My photographers and my videographers, I love them. They're great, but it is the biggest weakness in this business. The way that we can fix the weakness is by having good relationships with them, but we're really relying on them to show up, to show up on time, to fulfill the whole scope of work for what they have contracted for, to, you know, there's so many things. And so it's a huge vulnerability. If I could like have that magic dust and have that all be perfect and they're not canceling for random reasons. And there's, there's hundreds of them. Right. So, um, and all we do right now, we do about 30 to 60 weddings a month. So for every wedding, there's two contractors. And so every weekend in the busy weekends, we might have 20 just on the weekend, 20 weddings. So you're talking about logistics of moving 50 people to an event that day. And as you can imagine, statistically stuff happens. So like that magic dust would be great for all that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That, that, there's such clarity with, with where to put that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, all right. For those that are watching that are, they're listening to this later on, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, where can we advise them to go for more information? If they want to learn more about the, uh, you know, the business, they want to learn more about you. They want to connect with you. Um, anything like that, where, where can we advise them to go for a little bit more information or we're first in business over or anything like that? Yeah. Well, we have our website joyphotoandvideo.media. And from there, you can see a bunch of information about the business. And if you ever do want to connect, um, you can just go, you can contact anybody there or just my email is john at joyphotoandvideo.media. That goes directly to me. So yeah, hopefully, you know, I'm still on my journey. I, like I said, you need to stay humble. I don't know it all, but if there's anything that I could share that I've learned that does help I'm happy to help. So beautiful. And I know I've got kind of your LinkedIn profile saved around here somewhere as well. I'll probably throw that in there. Yeah. So if, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're watching this later on, um, first, of course, go check out all the, the business stuff, check out the website, all of those sorts of things, but at a minimum, like connect with John on, on LinkedIn, send him a message say, Hey, saw you in the business spotlight. Great conversation. You know, that's one of my favorite things when it comes to, you know, these conversations is just connecting yeah. other entrepreneurs and things like that. So highly encourage Great. everyone just take a moment after this and go do that. Um, so we'll finish off on one final question, which is kind of the, the fun one I always like to end on. And that is simply what is most inspiring to you today? Oh yeah. yeah. 
that question. <laughs> I remember you mentioned that before the, we started. Um, um, every day, well, without getting too emotional, but every, every day what I live for is my family, my wife and my kids. Like that's the whole reason why I do everything. So that's, yeah, it's a never ending well of inspiration. So, yeah. It's amazing. <clears throat> John, I want to say thank you again for taking the time. Uh, I, I know we could sit here for hours and just like dive into a whole bunch of different stuff, but I appreciate you taking the time, sharing some, some context and some lessons learned along the way. Yeah. Um, it, it's truly been a pleasure to, to have this conversation. I appreciate you sharing it with us. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Tanner.